Hey everybody, Brian Silkett here. I'm going to start doing some introductory coppersmithing videos for you guys. As a lot of you know, I'm getting closer and closer to doing something different. Got to take a little bit of time off because of shoulder. And, and you're going to see me taking some pauses in these videos for my shoulder to recuperate a little bit. I'll, I'll fast forward, delete out, block out as much as I can. Today's video is... I'm going to offer this kit. Uh, actually, I'll, I'll go ahead and tell you, the kit itself is $10. If you have it shipped, the kit will cost you $10 to ship. But I put these in flat rate envelopes. So you can order five kits. I can put it in the same envelope and you'll have $60 in five kits versus $100 in five kits. Uh, this is something a, a kid should be able to do this. For the most part, we're gonna be using common hand tools, parts that I thought you might have trouble with, I've already taken the liberty of doing for you. Uh, in this case, the handle is, I'm sending it to you in a flat piece, but you'll see the edges are already folded over, so you don't have to worry about it cutting somebody as you build the cut. The kit also will consist of a bottom that you have to mark yourself. You'll understand why after I get you started here. And a sidewall. For those of you who have heard of my chug mug, this is the right measurements for the chug mug. If you put a thin wall koozie around, say a beer can or a pop can, it will fit tight inside of these cups. Not so tight as you can't get it in and out, but tight enough you don't have to worry about it accidentally dumping out while you're, you're sp or drinking. And kind of covers up what you're drinking, you know, in those events where you might not want somebody to know. Uh, I'll do my best to edit this video for time. Overall, these take me about an hour to build if I'm not if I'm taking my time and not explaining it. So I'm hoping that overall this video will be an hour and I can edit it down to 30, 40 minutes. We'll see what happens as we go here. So the common hand tools you're going to need. One, a common pair of slip joint pliers. I'm going to get these up here. If you look, and I don't know how well you can see it in the camera, but I've rounded the corners on these pliers. And the reason I've done that is so they won't cut the copper as we're working. Another set of tools, actually it's not set. You're going to find some cheap needle nose vice grips, really handy. You will need a torch. I use matte gas for speed. For this project, propane should work just fine. Um, let me see. This one's kind of wore out, but a Dremel with a flap wheel attachment. Kind of handy for removing extra solder if you get it. And I believe for... Oh, sorry. This is the most custom tool, the custom tool that I'm going to use today. This is from Harbor Freight, a compass divider for marking on steel. They're about 10 bucks, not very expensive. And for copper, it lasts a long time. For steel, I'm gonna say it's about a C minus quality tool. It's a little flimsy for hard scratching, but it works great with copper. Uh, well worth the investment if you are planning on building more than one of my kits because all of my bottoms you are going to have to mark yourself. Now we will get started. First thing is the sidewall. The black line, sorry everything's backwards on camera, right there is where you're actually folding everything to. So this will be the main body of your 
your cup and unfortunately I don't have a cup sitting here. They're all out being cleaned at the moment for a show this weekend. Uh, I gotta re-angle the camera. So this piece we're trying to just kind of straighten the edge. I'm using the hard end of a rubber hammer. The hard end of a rubber hammer in case I had messed up with the sound, messed up the sound there. Landed on top of a piece of two inch pipe. Your pipe's not real important, but all I'm doing is just hammering that very edge to straighten it just a little bit and add a little bit of curvature to it. I don't know if you could even see the bend that I put in it. I will, you can see a little bit of a hook there in the camera and actually the camera's making it look bent, but it's not. I don't know why that is. So we go to the opposite side and we do the same thing in the same direction, black line up, but just a little bit more. You want a little more metal sticking over the pipe. See, it's pretty straight, a little bit of a hook in it. So you'd think I'd have washed, you'd think I'd have washed my hands before I done this, folks. My fingernails and stuff are dirty. You just want to have to overlook it. It is what it is. If you're trying to stay clean, copper smithing's probably not the right thing for you to do. So now, over top of the same piece of pipe, lay it flat and start working it with your fingers, you're not trying to form it to the pipe, just using the pipe as a guide to help you start rounding it. And when you're done, you want the side without the, this is the line side, you want the side without the line to be a little tighter than the side with the line. I'll explain that more here in a second. Notice I just flipped it over. I work from both ends towards the center on this. The side with the lines under a little, so I'm actually going to push this side in to where it, it's just a tad bit under the other. And the reason I'm doing that is when we put a set of clamps on that, everything will be a lot tighter. The clamps, clamps are, again, just needle nose vice grips. Fold it over to your line. and clamp in place. Same thing on the other end. And that pair of pliers is loose. Let me tighten them a notch. There we go. There we go. Now if you've done this right, your seam should have very little gap. In these kits, I priced them one way and one way only. We will have a, a second kit that has flux and solder, or yeah, flux and solder with it. It will be a little bit higher. I'm trying to find a small roll that's already packaged out, so I'm not cutting out odd amounts of solder. And when I do that, I'll have a price for the other kit too. But as far as what kind of solder to use now, basically for these cups, folks, you can use anything that's lead free and rated for plumbing. Now, we'll get back at it. I'm going to readjust my camera. I don't want to get you too close because I don't want all of the, the flux to spatter on the, the lens. This flux that I am using now is Bridget flux. It works fairly well. I, I like it for beginners. There's other fluxes I like better here in the shop when I'm getting into different things. But this overall is a good quality flex. Notice I'm heating more of the top, a little bit around where the pliers are, and again at the top. The reason I'm doing this, and I'll show you a little more here in a second, is the solder should only flow down to the bottom lip of this top piece if I do it right. And it's because that was the hot spot. 
if you heat the bottom more, it'll let your solder run to the inside. And that's what the Dremel with the flap wheel's for, if that happens to you. I'm gonna let that cool just a minute. As you can see, we'll put the camera on me. I know I'm ugly. There we go, we'll put the camera on me. As you can see, it is already starting to resemble a cup. It's that simple. As it starts to cool off, and I am a little bit premature with this, folks, you want to grab a rag and wipe it off. Get rid of that flux before it gets cold and sticky again. My rag looks awful. I apologize if you see it in the camera here, you're going to. But the seam is now soldered. Notice there's not a lot of extra solder on it, and I'll try to show you the inside. None ran to the inside to speak of. You'll see a little bit there, but nothing that's going to cause any problem. Oh, and that is still a little bit too hot to work with. We'll let her cool down a little bit more. I could dip it in water, I guess, but then i got to dry it off, and that makes a, a little bit of an issue later. Uh... Sometimes if you if you let water sit on one, a little bit of the calcium white haze it stays behind will cause you a lot of trouble with soldering later. So I try not to do any real cleanup until the project's done. As far as how to clean it when it's done, you can melt, mix some citric acid. Uh, it's for canning tomatoes. You'll find it most super stores. Walmart, Kroger's, Ingalls should probably carry it. I, I'm from up north. I don't know a lot about Ingalls, but I'd say they have it. Uh, Save a lot, I believe, even has it. Up north here, Menards has it. So it, it, it's not hard to find. It's a powder. And just like I said, mix an ounce of the powder to a gallon of water. So now this is warm. It's, it's not hot, hot. You notice I'm not quite round. So take the moment here, and I'll tell you it's best to pinch in on the sharp spots. And at sometimes it's going to look way out around to you. Don't let that get to you. You'll get it. Just keep playing with it. Oddly enough, it has more to do with the tension all the way around than it does the shape. So getting closer here on mine. If you're trying to follow me in the video and put one of these together, if I get ahead of you, hit pause. But chances are we're going to be working about the same pace because we're doing the same thing. Your shop might be set up a little different, whatever. So we don't know how much heat actually, you know, your shop's going to have. But, but now this piece is fairly cool. I'm handling it pretty easy. The next step is to measure down a quarter of an inch and make a line. My dividers are already set. You can do this with a marker. You don't have to have dividers, but folks with dividers, it's as simple as just following that lip around. I'll show you here when I'm done. I gotta get it down to my level. Tilt that down. You have to look at my big belly, but <laughs> Okay, and you look there's a line all the way around Up here So now then pliers slip joint pliers with the rounded corners Put them toward the edge of them, is right in line with that line you scratched on, and bend outwards approximately 45 degrees. Folks, I will offer these pliers too if somebody wants a set. I want to tell you, I'm going to the dollar store, picking up the cheapest pliers I can get, and grinding the edges down. You can do the same thing on your own, but if you're afraid to do it, get a hold of me. We'll work it out. It's probably going to cost you more to ship them than it is for me to make the set of pliers for you if you're afraid to. But now go right next to that same bend and just keep doing it. The same thing. 
Right here is four bends. You can see I've started working a lip outward. If you tear, your plier edges are too sharp or you're bending too much at once. Working my way on around, just doing the exact same thing. If you have a bead roller, you can actually tip these, that's what it's called, outward on a bead roller with the right die set up. But this is for beginners, and most beginners aren't going to have a bead roller. So this is, you know, just getting you by with some cheap tools and stuff you can find maybe laying around your house and at the local hardware stores. Okay, as you can see, it's not folded down flat. We want it flat, so you can keep working at it with pliers. Or, I want to readjust the, the camera here in a second. You can use one of these. A regular uh, framing hammer, you might want to flatten the tip on it a little bit. Notice there's some arc in this hammer, in the hammer head, but it's not as arced as most. And that means a lot on how much force you actually have to use and how wide of an area it actually works at a time. Take a second, make sure that it's pretty round. It don't have to be perfect, but pretty close. Whew. Man, this thing's walking closer, getting up there. Boy, I could be ugly. Notice that I've hammered that down just a little bit too far for what most of you would think that I'm doing here. The reason I do that is it, it helps with the next step, everything tighten up with the bottom. Now, there's a few ways of doing bottoms and I talk about this a lot with stills. You're going to hear me talk about how to put bottoms in quite often. With a cup, you could get by just putting that flat bottom on there. Flat bottom girls. That ain't how that song went. And take a couple pairs of vice grips and clamp it on. And Well, I got a gap there. You'd probably use four pair of vice grips with this. But you could just solder around that and trim to the edge that you folded down. For cups, that's, that's fine. For stills, I would say, if I was grading that as a teacher, I would call that a, a C, a, a, an average bottom. Uh, there, there's worse out there and there's better as far as that goes. If, if that's what you have the skill to do on a moonshine still, especially, it, it's going to hold up for a while. If you do the next thing I'm getting ready to do here with this cup, it'll hold up a whole lot longer, be a lot more stable. It, it, folks, this is where it's, it's kind of up to you, and that's why I cut these patterns out the way I do. So you can, you can make it yours. So what I am going to do is I am going to measure around this cup about three times and I'm going to take my scribe and mark a circle. Plenty big enough to measure across a three and a half or so inch cup. <clears throat> so this is where some people have trouble and I want to tell you, you can, I, I'm marking a circle that will line up with this edge. If you are afraid to try to average fractions like I'm getting ready to do, you can set that cup on there, set it about in the center, trace all the way around it with your marker, and then make another circle a little bit bigger. I'll explain that better here in just a second. We, on the other hand, are going to do this the way a true beginning coppersmith, the way I feel like they should do it. Okay, we got three and a quarter. We've got three and a quarter. 
right here looks like it could that's three and a quarter there we got about three and three actually it's closer to three and five sixteenths so if you get into that usually this edge right here needs to be trimmed down just a little bit and that will make up for it uh, but we are going with the measurement of three and one quarter inches so now we got this piece of copper here and we need to find the center to mark a circle folks don't overthink it line your ruler up from corner to corner or your straight edge it don't have to be a ruler mark your line do it again mark your line that's center so now you have three and a quarter inches you're marking you have to divide that by half which is an inch and a half and an eighth you're going to like the way I do my math there but it's easy so an inch and a half that's half a three and then half of a quarter is an eighth and because I know that mine's just a tad bit big I'm going to overhang that eighth inch mark maybe a 60, 64th of an inch You put your compass right there in the center. And you mark a scribe or scribe a line all the way around. I don't know if you, you can see that somewhat. So now I'm going out another three sixteenths of an inch to a quarter of an inch. And I'm making another line. This is actually the cut line. The tools that I forgot to say, you can use any kind of shear that you like. This is a pair of Irwin shears I've had around for a long time. Notice there's two lines. We're cutting the outside line. I don't know if I can do this on camera. It's not gonna be easy, but just take your shears and run right on that edge. Now here's a little secret. If you cut these corners off, not quite to your line, I'll just do it and show you on the camera here in a second. It's easier. This helps you turn your shears a little easier. You don't have that much metal pushing back against you. So I'll try to get this here in the camera again. Get me out of it. Sometimes that will curl around on you. You have to pull it out of your way. Stay on that line as best you can. It will really help you out in the next step. Now, we're back to the slip joint pliers. Uh, doing the exact same thing on this that you've done on the sidewall. Trying to get where you can see here. You line the pliers up with that inside line. And you don't do them right up against each other. Leave a little bit of a space in between. In this case, I'm going about three quarters of an inch in between bends. That would be center of the pliers to center of the pliers. Trying to watch my language and make this to where it's a little bit more friendly for the young ones. Uh, my old, more crude videos, I'm going to kind of rework. I know some of you like my strange sense of humor, but I got a lot of kids trying to follow me and you know I, 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 it, it makes me feel good that kids are wanting to learn this, learn how to make these cups and stuff. Hopefully they don't get into moonshine stills till they get older. But now what we have is a dish that kind of resembles a pop cat and your cup will hopefully 
snap right down into it. Mine ain't wanting to go real easy. It's going to go, but... Remember when I said my lip was a little bit too big? That's what I'm fighting right now. Okay. So now we got to completely change the camera angle here. Now we are taking the hammer and molding those worst spots. This is, let me get it get a little more centered. Right there's a lip sticking out where the pliers, we didn't bend as much. Start working those little lips up. And you'll see it start tightening up. Don't get real excited with beating on it yet. Just start tightening it. You're not trying to hammer it all the way over. It's going to look a little wrinkly. Don't worry. So now, wow, there we go. Let that camera stop a second. Try to get rid of this light over here. There we go. Why I like to mark these is it forces your cup more round. If you decided to just trace the bottom, get your cup as round as you can before you mark it. It'll look a lot better for you. Okay, now we've went around at one loop. The bottom is pretty well attached, but you can still see it. So we're gonna take these the part to stick it up and start working it over the lip that's sticking out of the sidewall of the cap, the main body of the cap. I'm holding my hammer at an angle to where it's folding it over. There's a lot of different ways to do this. This is the easiest I've found for me. Now we get to where you've got to be a tad bit creative. We want to fold that lip all the way over to where it touches the bottom again. And I'll tell you in my shop, I use a hammer like this. This set isn't very good. The head wobbles on it. Um, these come from Amazon. They're about $30 a set. They come with three hammers, four body dollies. For copper, again, they work out fairly well, but expect to put new handles in them and do a little bit of polishing and reshaping. Uh, I, actually, I buy these things two or three sets at a time and reshape for different purposes as I'm going here in the shop. Uh, because they're so cheap, you can spend $50 on or more on one hammer if you want. I've got hammers here that are a couple hundred dollars a piece. But these, like I said, a set of them, 30 bucks, will get you started. Plan on putting a new set of handles in them. Another option you might have is going to like a flea markets, yard sales. You'll find some of the odd shaped body hammers and stuff like that there. Harbor Freight sells a set too, and I, I've got a set here I'll show you one of. So this is the one that Harbor Freight sells. This is the one that Amazon sells. The one from Amazon is about half of the weight of the Harbor Freight one. You can see it more probably if I show you these. Yeah. The Harbor Freight one is a little heavy for these cups. I use this more when I'm working like 32 ounce copper on the bottom of the stills on the, what I'm getting ready to show you here, but it's for heavier copper. You could take one of these and take a grinder and cut a little off of each side, maybe cut it down a little and cut the top down a little and lighten them up if that's what you have access to. Wanna hang this back up? Um, you could actually if you've got a broke off screwdriver, you can use that and knock these points down too. That would work just as well. Um, an old piece of flat bar laying around would work. 
And I'll, I'll, as I get going here, I'll flip it over and I'll show you a couple other little methods here that I think you'll like. So what we're doing still is taking the points and pushing them in. And you literally can put a still bottom in the same way. Now this is 20 ounce copper. It's probably a little heavy for these, but you guys don't want me to buy thinner copper and charge you the full price for the sheets, I'll tell you that. We cut these out of what's left over. Now you're trying not to hit the actual side of the cup, you're trying to hit down on those pieces that are, you're folding over. Okay, you can see I've got them hammered down. Get you up a little closer here. They're not quite tight yet, but they're hammered down. So you could lay this like this and use the other end of the hammer and work those down. I did that right there. I'm going to keep using the hammer. It's just easier for me. You could also put them in a bead roller and roll them down tight if you have one. Now, if there's a little bit of a ripple, I'll get up close here. Don't worry, because soldering will cover up some of that ripple. Okay. As you can see, it's on there tight, not going anywhere. You can fold this lip over to where this edge touches the sidewall again, and it will be nearly waterproof without solder. So that's something for you to keep in mind. A traditional tin smith, you can see where I hit the cap a little bit, but a traditional tin smith or copper smith would have folded that on over quite possibly. So now we are going to solder. Flux first. How much flux do you need? Common question people ask me. Really, just cover it with this kind of flux, just cover it with a thin layer. There, I actually had a little bit too much here. Maybe I need a little bit more. But you're going to see that's plenty what I've put on there now. Okay, torch. Too much. You want it to kind of go slow. You gotta be careful because you can melt the solder out of that other seam while you're doing this. So I start around the cup just a little bit away from the seam. And I get a little bit of solder stick to the cup. I don't know if you can see that pull over or not. And then I go to the bottom and I heat from underneath. That stainless is pulling a lot of my heat away. But while you're underneath, you don't have to worry so much about melting across that seam that I'm passing right now. I'll turn it just a little bit and Leave it stick over your bench a little. You gotta watch, because whatever's underneath of it can pull heat away or really mess with you. I was in the middle of doing this right here at Hillbilly Gym in North Carolina, Maggie Valley, and I dropped one. And John Bentz, a fellow Ohioan, he walked by and he said, I want one of them. I said, here, you can have this one because I just got solder all up the side of it. And John was the one who figured that out about the, the koozie and the beer cans fitting in it. 
and he's kind of the guy who dubbed the term chug mug. These things have been a hit ever since. Just notice I'm not getting in a hurry. Everything's kind of warm. It's a transferring rate on around. So while that's cooling, I'll try to get that light out of the picture some. While that is cooling, I did use more solder and ran it over to the edge of the bottom. I'll point that out here as it cools off a little. And I did that more for decorative reasons, just so you don't see the lip so much. If you let just a little bit of solder pull up, pull as in swimming pool, water pedal pull, then it will come out looking a lot smoother. And that's why I do that. As a rule of thumb, one of the things I push in copper smithing is don't think of solder like welding. Think of it as a sealant that you have to use heat to apply. So now we are 41 and a half minutes into this video. We're waiting on it to cool and we still have two main things to do. We're going to fold the top over so it doesn't cut you when you're taking a drink. That's, it's kind of an optional thing whether or not you want to do it, but me, as somebody who does this on my fold it over, and we've got to put a handle on this some bitch. So I'm going to start with the handle right now. Uh, this, this allows you to do a few different designs, and I, I allow plenty. This is enough for almost two handles if you look. Probably could get two handles out of it. But you can make handles that come up in a loop like a big question mark and back down and touch. You can just do them like D-shaped. Whatever you want to do, whatever, look around on the internet at what other people's done. Pick one you like and kind of fold it around. Today, for simplicity reasons, I am going to do the, the question mark style. And I'm going to do it for what I like to refer to as a big-handed person. So now, I'm going to put you back on my pipe here. Hey, stay off the pipe, kids. It's back for you. Uh, I want to debate on which way I want to go with this. Also do this by hand. No reason you could. So keep in mind, folks, I'm still folding a little bit over on a lip here. But as you can see, we're starting to get it folded around. And at this point, I'm going to mark a spot with a marker. Okay. Putting the handle down just a little from the top because I know the top's coming down some. And with my marker, I'm kind of pulling it over and figuring out where the bottom will be, and I'm marking a line. Got to put some stuff down here. So now I'm going to fold this on over. And that was not a very pretty fold. I'm seeing now I can get by with a little more. Okay. 
Mark the bottom. I'm going to go a little bit bigger. Chop that some bitch off. Notice the mark's still on there. I want to go to my vise. I'll adjust the camera. We needed to come back over here anyways. So I'm going to put up my vise where that line is. That line, even with the top jaw. And I'm going to fold this out just a little bit. I'm going to work the top over a little bit more. And I believe you can see where I'm going here. This is what I'm calling the question mark shape. So now you can see I'm, I'm a little bit too big. And that's part of the reason I do it this way. It lets me trim stuff down and make it to where I like it, like the way it looks. You can also re-arc things a little bit as you need to. Oh, I didn't take a lot of time with this, but I trimmed it, cut a couple 45s, a little neater appearance. And we're starting to line back up with the cup again. Things are starting to look good. Okay, so here you want both pieces to fit flat against the cup. You notice my bottom's not quite flat and the top's good ways off. So we're gonna put the bottom back in Add some to it. Actually, I think I just went the wrong way. No, I didn't. That was right. And uh, the top. For all general purposes, I'm just going to put it right here. just a little bit more bend to it and once you get close it's usually easier just to take your pair of slip joint pliers and do the bend and remember to bend your towards your center to where it fits your cup just a little bit better I don't know if you can see that arc or not but just a little bit of an arc put it up against your cup and now that's starting to look like something that'll solder. Now we're rounding it to fit the cut better. See the arc? Same thing on the top. I'm gonna knock them corners down just a little bit. Some copper smiths here would go ahead and use a rivet instead of solder, and there's technically nothing wrong with that other than rivets can leak, loosen up and start leaking. Before we put the handle on though, we need to bend the top lip over. So it's basically the same thing that you've done on the bottom. I have, if you look, there's a little bit of a lip sticking up there. Get myself out of the camera, get the lip in it. I'm trimming that off. I'm going about two inches away on the cut and working my way towards it. And just getting rid of as much of it as I can, making it without making it look like I cut the cap. We go back to the dividers, and we put a line all the way around. We use, sorry, 
line all the way around. Can you see it there? Above my pliers there. Back to the slip joint pliers. Start on the seam and on the line. Fold out about 45 degrees. With your edges kind of touching every time you turn the ply. Just keep bringing that out. Now you're watching me make silly faces. I guess I could angle that down a little so you can watch me do this instead. So you can do this before you put the bottom in if it makes you feel more comfortable. You're going to be hammering this on the pipe here in a minute and sometimes people put a dent in the bottom when they're hammering on the pipe which you can shove a, an axe handle or something up in there and smooth the dents back out if need be. Oh, so we're bent down approximately 45 degrees all the way around, just like the bottom whenever we start. Same thing. Okay, so some traditional copper smiths may have put wire up in that and that would help hold the, the edge of your cup more rigid. With this 20 ounce copper, we're, we're thick enough it stays pretty rigid, so I don't worry about teaching you the wire technique just yet to keep this a beginner's course. We're knocking that lip on over. So some real sheet metal guys, tin smiths or copper smiths may get a hold of me and say, hey, you're supposed to use wood when you're working on metal and metal when you're working on wood. I'm not hammering this tight just yet. So I'm gonna use my rubber hammer to finish it. Just so you guys are aware, you can use a piece of wood and kind of slap at it. That works just as well. Actually, I'll, here, you use a hammer handle. See, it still does it. So if you want to be more traditional, just get you a couple hammer handles. And as I start getting it tight, of course, this will be the last lap with the hammer, metal hammer. Okay, you can still see a little bit of a rip in it. Ripple, ripple, not rip. Uh, on that hammer, the yellow end is the hardest. This is a Vaughn hammer I bought at Menards. Lowe's probably carry something similar, Harbor Freight. Now we have distorted the top just a little bit. Just take your fingers, work it around. Sometimes it helps to put it on the pipe and squeeze things. Solder just hit the floor. Okay. So now we're in decent shape again. Now for the handle. I like to go close to the seam, but not directly against it because when you're soldering this on, you can melt the solder out of that seam. But why I do that is a guy with a mustache. You don't want your mustache hairs or your wife's mustache hairs getting caught in this cup. That just tends to piss women off when their mustache hairs get caught in their cups. So I'll go three quarters of an inch, an inch away from the main seam. Actually, I go the other way because you're seeing all of this backwards, but 
Being right-handed, that puts the seam behind the handle for me. Occasionally I make left-handed cups too. I don't know if people ever notice the difference or not. But it is what it is, and they're your cups. Be creative. So now, attaching the handle. You can see where this might take about six different hands. I'm one guy in a shop today. So how do you do this and not burn yourself? <laughs> it's, it's not as hard as you think. We're back to the vise. First thing you do, it's a lot of times I'll cut 45s up here too, but for this time around I didn't do it just to kind of speed things up a little. And you're gonna see it don't really make a lot of difference up there. So what we wanna do is get those kind of straight. We're putting some flux on. And we're getting ready to flux it up. Okay, so what we're gonna do is heat from the bottom side. We're gonna get a little button of solder sitting there. We're gonna do the same thing on this end. A little bit more. I am back, camera was going dead on me. I've got her plugged in. Thank God we're almost finished because we can't move the camera very far now where it's hooked to the cord. But luckily I have an outlet here close to the vise. So while we've been running around getting the cord, the handle has cooled down. I'm taking it out of the vise. I'm gonna point the camera back at the vise. I'm gonna open it up. Notice how that lays right down on there. If you're lucky, it'll... So, where it touches the cap, underneath of the solder, add you a little bit of flux. I've got a little bit of extra solder here in case I need it. But basically, all we do now is just heat it. And you'll usually see a touch of movement from it. This one we may not. There it took. Now we're up to the top doing the same thing. Heat the cup a little bit too, folks. That's what I was having trouble out on the bottom. Heat wasn't transferring through real well. We just add a little bit of solder and there you go. Rag to help me handle the heat a little. Wiping, cleaning it up. Okay, so cleaning it up, and this is something I, I like you to do. Feel around the lips and stuff. If you feel something that's a little extra sharp, in my case, it's the inside of the handle. Put it on something, give it a little smack with a hammer, and knock the sharpness out of it. Or take a file if that's a better option for you. Okay, that's, I know you can't see what I just done there, but I was knocking these two corners down. And by the way, that handle is still extremely hot. So now, we're going to let that cool just a minute, and we're going to do a quick polish on it. Now, this rag, I know it looks awful, 
I always use the same rag. Well, not always, but a lot of the times I put polish on stuff. Just so I ain't going through so many damn rags. I have, uh, I guess I should have showed you. Beeper's friend, easiest thing I have found. Rub it on. Rub it inside. So folks, I'm gonna go ahead and tell you, I normally do this with a drill because my big fat hands don't like to get down in these cups. But if you look, it's already pretty well shined up. And this barkeeper's friend doesn't leave a resin. Sorry, it doesn't turn everything green. If you clean these and they turn green real quick, that is a potential liver toxin. So be careful with that. If you see it, get it cleaned off your cup. That's a kind of, but at the same time, copper is antibacterial. So <clears throat> technically, you don't have to really clean it. You should, don't get me wrong, you should. I wouldn't put milk down in this thing and then probably put water in it and drink it. But you know that the copper itself ain't going to give you a bug. Finished product. Doing it and talking about it, my wife interrupting and looking for a couple of tools I should have had ready. We're now at a minute and eight, sorry, an hour and eight minutes into this video building a cup from what would be your kit. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you enjoy coppersmithing. Uh, we may, as these videos go, I want to do some stills and then I, I, I plan on showing some people how to do repasse, and, which is embossing into metal and stuff like that too. I, I hope you find these videos informative and I ain't going to beg for money, but folks, I want to tell you that doing this for free, I'm doing you all a big favor. So if you if you feel the need to send me a little bit of money, I'll give you my cash app. You can send it to me over Facebook, pay, whatever. Uh, but I'm not going to make everybody, you know, sign a membership of that. I, I, I teach classes out of my yard here too. If you would rather a more personal approach you can come to my shop and build your own still or cups uh, I, I was thinking actually about stopping the classes but I'm getting as, as long as you guys keep asking I, I reckon I'll try to keep doing you folks enjoy yourselves don't let this get you stressed out it's, it's just copper if you start getting stressed you're thinking about swinging the hammer a little too hard walk away copper will teach you patience if you get burned, try not to throw it because that didn't you got to fix after you throw it. It just, you know, it is what it is. It's, it's not a lot of fun. But what would you guys like to see next? I guess that's what we need to do. Uh, what, what would you guys like to see me build next? I'll try to do a video of it. Might be a multi-part video. We'll see how all of that works. Until then, I'll probably do this about once a week until I see you next week or so. Be careful, don't burn yourself, take care of one another, and God bless.